Okay. Father, dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you again, O Lord, seeking, Lord, your forgiveness and your mercy for anything that we have done that is not like you, O Lord. Our thoughts, our actions, O God, we lay it at your feet, O Father. You are gracious and you are merciful. And Lord, you've been so good to us. Father, we cannot ask for any more. And so we give you the praise. We just we just bow at your feet, oh Lord. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would teach this lesson, teach this course, and help the students, oh God. Give them a mind how to do and what to do. And we give you the praise and we give you the glory for everything, oh God. In yes. Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so here we go. Uh, I want to begin by um, asking if there are any questions. Any questions before we go into um, our study? Elder Moore, you have any thoughts or anything that you might uh, want to talk about before we begin? Yeah, only thing I, I think I need to discuss with you and Dr. Joyce is all these questions I got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. We're going to begin um, uh, with your paper, but before we look at your paper, I want to um, just say this. Students, you are graduate level. You are graduate level, which means by the time you take a graduate level course, such as this, you should have some writing skills, writing skills. That means research skills, skills that will help you go out and get information to find out about the topic that you choose. So, and then the other thing we ask is that you have a computer so that you can write, first of all, so that you can join us on Zoom so that you can continue writing. Even when we're not in class or you're not given an assignment, a graduate student, which is the next, the next level would be doctoral, doctorate degree. And so you are at a very high level, which means you've got to do a lot of work independently. That means no one has to tell you that you've got to do research, you've got to write, you've got to talk to people, you've got to think outside of the box what you're going to write and who you're going to write to. I can tell you this from experience. You need the Holy Ghost to lead you. He is very intelligent. He's the smartest being on this planet. So if you let the Holy Ghost lead you, he'll give you how to grasp, grab things, how to gather information. And once you gather that information, he'll put that in your mind. He'll also bring back scriptures to you. So when you're writing this paper, I want you to think of writing this paper as a sermon, because many of us are in ministry. And so when you're talking or when you're looking at something, let the Holy Ghost lead you and give you that scripture, throw it in your paper with your research, with whatever you're, you're talking about. And we're going to look at uh, Elder Moore's paper. Uh, he has uh, given me... Um, uh, a document is his, uh, his draft for the proposal and we're going to look at that and by the end of this quarter he's going to be done with it. He's going to have have worked on all of the elements and so let's see what elements that he has worked on and when you write your paper don't worry about trying to put everything where it belongs. If you can do that, throw it in there. You may have to move it later, that's okay, but throw it in there. 
Dr. Joyce and myself, we will kind of tell you that that belongs in the statement of the problem, that belongs under the purpose, or you can put that over into the significance of the study or what to do about your question. We're going to always have more questions and then we have to come back and narrow it down because some of those questions are actually one question. When you, you, you put three questions, we can make it only one. And it's okay to have more than that because this is the draft stage. This is the draft right now. Mm -hmm. Don't throw anything away. This is the draft. So we don't throw anything away. And uh, that way we can go back if we need stuff. You can go back and get it. I've had to do that so many times with myself and with students. Okay? Keep in mind, each student is going to, their paper is going to be a little different. Their paper is going to be a little different. We can simply give you a guide, which is your proposal example. It is a guide, and if you use it, make it work for you. Use some of the language, use some of the, um, the jargon, the research jargon, as examine, explore, investigate. Use some of those words, because you now are the researcher. You're the researcher. So you want to use some of those academic sounding research words, investigate, explore, currently, additionally, some of those transitional uh, words that will pop your paper and make your paper kind of sound academically. That's all, that's all you want to do. Again, <clears throat> we are we are saying 10. The 15 pages. <coughs> 10 to 15 pages. You think about it, that's not really a lot for chapter one because this is your chapter one. It is a proposal, but you finish writing it, we flip it. We don't change it too much other than to say where you have the personal pronoun, I will do the, the I will do the, we, we want to take those eyes out of there and we'll say the invest the investigator will instead of I will and that takes it so now you have two things you got the proposal and now you got your chapter one you are done for the first quarter you're going to have your proposal and you're going to have chapter one not only that you're going to have your letter yeah you're going to have your letter. What else? The letter, you have your title page, uh, anything else that you write. When you get to a point where you say, you know what, I just can't write anymore. Gather information. Think about it. Pray about it. Gather information. Look, go online. I found the easiest way to go right to my telephone and Google. Google, just go to your phone and Google that information. Okay, and and see what you come up with, and then um, uh, and then the other thing is, if you can't write, you're at a point where you know you get writer's block. I've gotten that way. Do something else. Write your bio because your bio is going to go in this paper. Write your bio. If you can't write the introduction, if you wrote, wrote the introduction, go do the summary. Go do something else. Get work on your definition. Your definition, you can say, well, I got five definitions. Why not work to have 10 definitions? Because the more that you have in your paper, the more pages it's going to give you. And somehow the definition, they kind of scratch the paper. You know, after you get through doing one, two, three, da, 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 you know, you look and say, well, you know what? I need more definition because I found out that put in definitions in my paper, I'll have 10, 12 pages in, in a minute. Okay, so don't be afraid to go work on the title page. You already got the index because your outline is your table of contents. Your outline becomes your table of contents. All right, let's yep. see what, if we, what we're talking about here. 
lastly, lastly, read the book. Read the book. You want to know information about the proposal? Read up on the proposal. We have yet to get to um, APA documentation, which means if you want to say that you got, you got this information from someone, we want to show you how to put that in. So that you say, Dr. So-and-so said da 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 in his book, da 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 I want to show you how to put that reference in there. But right now in chapter in, in the proposal, we really, we really don't have to worry about that because we're not really doing a lot of um, uh, quotations. We will do a lot in chapter two. Some students like Pastor Candon, she has documentation in her proposal. That's because when she says that she research says 24% of millennials, she has to put down. 24% of millennials are leaving the church. Where did you get that information? It didn't come out of your head. That must have been a survey. So therefore, if you want to use that, you have to tell me where you got it from and put the reference in. And there's a certain way that you do that. Read the book. It's all in the book. Let's look at Elder Moore's paper. Elder Moore, thank you so much for writing. Just keep writing, writing, writing. Don't think, well, I wrote too much. I wrote too much. We want to see it. And that way we can kind of somewhere along the line determine, uh, put it in some kind of format. Okay? All okay. right. So give me a minute. My computer's um showing out a little bit. And I have to figure out how to do this. Okay, okay, okay. I knew it was him. Okay, let's see. Let's see. No, that's going to be better or more. Okay, oh Lord, Lord, more. Let's see if this is the one. Okay. Dr. George, you got a question? I just wanted to add um, to Elder Moore, like, uh, Dr. Butler was saying, you know, if you get tired of writing, go work on another section. Start right. researching scriptures that have to do with burnout. Right. Because you can put scriptures in your paper. It gives it more depth. It adds to it. So research scriptures while you're looking for things. Make sure that you add in some scriptures. That's right. That That is exactly right. My goodness. Okay, we're going to look at Elder Lewis Moore. <clears throat> God bless you if you're just joining us. We start off, Elder Moore, with your title page. When we look at the title page, I'm looking for, and when I say me, Dr. Joyce, we are looking for um, grammar. We're looking for spelling. And we're looking for paragraph structure. We're looking for sentence fragments and complete sentences. We're looking for how you put that information in. Again, we will help you. Uh, you you just need to write. Don't worry about, I don't know if, it, if this is correct grammar or whatever. Just write. Somewhere along the line, we're going to help you. Uh, at the beginning of this class, I said that graduate students should come into this class having a background in research writing. You had this in uh, in before you got to the class, but some of us we don't we don't get that. But that's okay. We'll help you the best we can. The first thing I look at, and I'm on the title page of Ella Lewis Moore's paper. I believe this one was edited by. Uh, no, this this is not the edited one. This is the edited one. No, it's not. Okay. This is the original one. Is this it? No, this one you have on the screen, this is the me, original one, not the edited one. Let me one. go through this one, and then I'm going to show you the next one. Long Beach Christian College. Is that the title of the school? It's in four quarters that you have on the screen. Say that again? It's in four, you have four pieces of the paper on the screen. Okay. All right. Okay. 
can you see the title page? No. No. Okay. Let me go back out again and see if we can. I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to come back in and see. Okay. Let's go and see if we can we can share it. Um, no, okay. Just give me a minute. No, take your time. Okay. All righty. Elder Lewis Moore. I've got two. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna share this one first. That's what we got here. And then uh, there's another one, I believe. Can everyone see this page? Yes. Well, okay. I need you to say amen. 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 Yeah. Looking at the title page. I, I, I'm looking at the title. Is this the title for the school? Elder Moore. Yes. yes. I'm looking. What's the title of the school? Long Beach Christian College. What? MTI. MTI. Oh, MTI. Okay. Okay. So let's put that. And, and I just want to use this. I'm going to you look at the other paper too. MTI. And none did not, and this should be centered. I don't know if you're centered. It should be. Not, uh, not, it's, not, it's not quite centered. Times Roman. Times Roman 12 font. Okay. This is the title page. It should be centered. I'm going to center it. So now it's centered. Well, let me see if I can get it centered. Okay, so I'm looking to see Long Beach Christian College, MTI, and non-denominational Bible College, Long Beach, California, graduation. It's not graduation pro project, it's graduate. Okay, graduate. Ella Moore, if you look at that? Yes. It's graduate. Well, now help me out, Dr. George. Graduate project, project proposal. And capitalize the P. Okay. Thesis. That's yeah. okay. Thesis. I, I'll, I'll leave that for now. Yeah. This is a draft. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, the title of this paper is Empty and Deserted Pulpit. But that doesn't go on the title page. Uh, and, and, and this title is something empty about it. It's yeah. empty and deserted pulpit, but it doesn't tell me that it's yeah. anything to do with the dirt. You know what I mean? So okay. we're going to work on that, on that um, title. Okay. okay. Again, this is a draft. This is a draft. I point it out because this is an opportunity for me to point it out. Okay. We're going to work on this a little bit. Empty and deserted pulpit. Pulpit. What? Where? Who? When? Why? How? Did you get that? Okay. Yes. Respectfully submitted to Dr. Who. Ernest Miller. One thing I ask is that you spell the dean's name correctly. correctly. Yeah. Spell yeah. your chancellor's name correctly. Academic Dean Graduate Project Advisor. His name is E R. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's PhD. Is that right? No. Okay. I'm just going to highlight, yeah, and, and these little things that are highlight, I'm not going to change it, but you can go back and you can look at it. Okay. By Lewis Moore, graduate student. You could actually put Elder Lewis Moore. I, okay. I don't mind it. It's up to you. All right. Okay. You can put Elder Lewis Moore, graduate student. Spring quarter. Usually it's always what? May. We put mm -hmm. May. Mm -hmm. May, it's always the spring, so it'll be 2023. You're talking about the overall paper. Oh, okay. The project, the overall paper, which would be five chapters. Okay. So by May, you would be finished the overall paper. Right. Of course, this is the proposal. So the title page, it will change, okay? It's gonna right. change, all right? 
um, I don't know what else goes on there, Dr. George, is uh, etiquette. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Next, we have the letter. Uh, mm -hmm. We have the name spelled right here, Ernest Miller. Mm -hmm. We're, I've highlighted PhD. Work on that. We put a date in, whatever date you want to put. Just put a date in. You don't have to put the word date. You don't need to put the word date. Just write in whatever the date is. October, whatever. And you don't have to put the date in. And okay. so we come, there's a format. Dr. Dr. Joyce will talk to you about that format. We're not going to double space the address. Is that right? Right. Okay. Let me see. Let me see if I can do this. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, take the, take the 10 point where it says after, take the 10 point out and then hit OK. OK. All right. There you go. So Dr. Joyce will show you how to do this. It's, it's okay. through Dean, Academic Dean, Graduate Project Advisor, Long Beach Christian College. Make sure you make put the uh, the entire uh, college name there. Uh, one okay. by West yeah. Victoria Street. We don't need the comma behind that. Long Beach, California, 908. Two spaces here. Uh, I think we got two spaces. I'm not sure what we got. But y'all look at that. There's two spaces right here, two spaces right there. For my graduate research proposal, look at this again because you, it's redundant. You've got graduate research proposal. And then it's and there too. Graduate re project proposal. Okay. So look at that again. Yeah, I changed it. Okay. And we're going to look at the next one. The emphasis of my research, you, you're on the right track, is the resignation of pastors in the ministry walking away. So you're saying two or three things there in that one sentence. So we, we, the emphasis of your research is, um, will, is, will, focus or is will focus on pastors uh, leaving, the, leaving the ministry, leaving the ministry, and therefore they're, they're deserting their pulpit. But we'll have to put that in words, okay? And well, I have seen in this actually, because mm -hmm. I have seen and heard of so many entering, entering, ministry and then later leaving leaving so le entering and leave make sure that that agrees somehow that step that um you know what I'm saying, that agrees there especially those who say it was a calling of god they're calling calling from god calling from god but god called 31 and we don't need to be long we don't have to make this don't have to be long at all not long at all. We don't have to have a whole long paragraph. It just says for my graduate research project, I'm writing this. The emphasis will be on blah, blah, blah. I'm interested in that. Bam, that's done. Chant it there. Chant it there for, for, for Dr. Moore, for Elder Moore. It is your thesis. You're writing your thesis. Your doctor will come later. That will be the dissertation. This is your graduate thesis. Many people have lost their faith in their pastors and are seeking help and a solution from other sources. This is pretty good, actually, as a thesis. It's an argument. I'm looking for an argument here. Okay. Um, the research title. Again, we're looking for your re research title. And uh, we're looking for... Uh, the last three the title. I don't need a paragraph here. I just need a title. All right. And let me see. Pastors walking away and leaving pulpit empty is something. You don't need to write that. I need a title. What's the title? I need a title. You can put this. So where's the, I need a title. You can still put that in if you want to put it in. But where's the title? So I'm looking for the thesis, a tentative thesis, the idea statement. Is your argument right here? This is just introduction, Dr. Miller. Uh, da 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 da. And Dr. Miller, my thesis on my argument is blah blah blah. My research title is blah blah blah. And then, if you want to end it here, you can say here, 
and then you can say uh, you can reach me. I, I don't see where you putting. I, you can reach me or call me because the dean might want to call you. And then you left room here. You left room for the dean's comments and signature approval. Uh, you've got that. That's great. Uh, we put a line. We put a line. Let me see if we can do this. Hold on a minute. Signature approval. And then we're going to put the date in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now put the date in. I'm just trying to show you, Dr. Moore, Elder Moore. I keep saying Dr. Major has that doctor too. <laughs> All things are possible with God. Amen. Okay, so now we got a line for signature right up under this line, right up under the line. You may have to lift this up a little bit. And then right up under the line, um, you put you put uh, the dean's name. Look at the example, okay? Right up under this line. You put yeah, Dr. Ernest Miller. Yeah, right up under this line, you, you put that uh, uh, right up under there, okay? All right, That's his name. You got, you got a little space. You may have to, may have to make this, uh, give it a little bit more room for we have date so we can write the date in. Let's see. Okay, so we got yeah. that. And, okay. Uh, okay. I'm moving a little fast. Research graphic proposal thesis outline. Here's your outline. You got your title there. That's good. That's okay. I centered the title. We centered the title. This again is Timothy. It's a draft. Empty right. third purpose. Half of leaving the ministry. Somewhere we'll end up with a good title. I promise you. Chapter one, I kind of went to change this a little bit. Chapter one, and I don't know how you want to do this. Uh, Dr. Joyce is working with you. How you're going to do this? You might put, um, let me start again. You might put, I don't know, you might want to know, leave it like it is right now. We'll leave it like it is. I got a little plus mark there. We know that, that that's going to change. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Or something such, however, you're going to do that. Okay. I, what I did here was put a little something here. I'm suggesting, I'm suggesting that Elder Moore, this is yeah. not suggested. Right here. What I'm suggesting is for your paper, go to the Bible. You are an elder. Uh, I know that uh, I know I've watched you over the years. I, I kind of know you a little bit just through, through uh, Dina Andrews seeing you and knowing your, uh, um, you know, your reputation, knowing a little bit about you. So I know that you are an elder who know the word of God. But this is what I suggest that you think about putting in your paper. Remember I said sometime we need to look at the paper kind of like a sermon? Yes. Oh, look, you remember the seven chosen to serve? Y'all remember that in the Bible? <laughs> Somebody help me out. Yep. Remember the, 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 the there were seven because they were mm -hmm. overwhelmed. Right. right. They're like, we don't have time to be out ministry because we've got to serve. So at that time, remember they chose the deacon? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the pastor's got to have help. Because he, his focus is on pastors. A pastor is a shepherd. A pastor is a leader. Okay? And so all of these how can you shepherd the flock and you've got the weight on table? That was the thing. Like, we, we can't do this anymore. We can't wait on table. We, we need help. So they chose seven to serve. The apostles faced some of the same dilemmas that pastors face in today's ministry. Look mm -hmm. at that. That's one. The next one you're going to talk about Moses. is Moses. 
Moses mm -hmm. is a good example of pastors. It was a leader. That's what pastors are. They are a Moses. They are a leader. They lead the people. They shepherd the people. They struggle with the people. Some of the problems of the people become the pastor's problem. You hear how I'm arguing this? Mm -hmm. You hear how I'm preaching this? Yes. Here is, I, I, now I don't know where the, the uh, scripture is, so I didn't put the scripture. I know there's scripture for this because it comes yeah. down to a point where Jethro has to say, Moses, Moses' father-in-law? Father yeah. yeah, his father-in-law. Yeah, he was his father-in-law. Moses, you got too much in front of you. You're going to Pastors are going to have to learn how to delegate. Yeah. They're going to have to learn how to delegate because they'll be burnt out. Moses is a good example. Moses was almost burnt out from trying to stand before the people and hear what they use Moses. Number three, Elder Moore, look yes. at Apostle Paul. Paul in ministry. Confess his experience of minister burnout. Paul expressed that. Paul says, I'm, I'm almost gone. Read 2 Corinthians 1 and 8. Read 2 Corinthians 11, 23, 27. I'm sure you're more familiar with that than me. But the Apostle Paul even got where if, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for the Lord and the zeal that he had. And, so, and, and he had a zeal because when you lose that zeal, help me, Holy Ghost, when you leave, lose that zeal, you want to back off. You want to desert the pulpit. You want to give up. Preach this message. Use your paper to bring that message. That yes. Paul was like, I don't know about going, going to Rome. You know, I you know what I mean? But nevertheless, Lord, because you, he pushed forward, he really, really pushed forward uh, with, uh, with all hope how in the world he's going to make it. The other one I, 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 I found was Elijah. Elijah is an example of loneliness and isolation. Pastors get there. Not only pastors, evangelists get there. Missionaries get there. Elders get there. Church mothers get there. Loneliness and isolation because you're doing the work and it doesn't seem like there's any thanks or it seems like you're all by yourself. And that's Elijah. Talk to me in your paper about Elijah. So, fatigue lack of faith, you know, whatever it is, we're not super, um, what do you call it, super saints. We're, we're just flesh and blood, filled with the Holy Ghost, even writing this paper. You need the Holy Ghost to help you bring back memory to write this paper. He even got you this far. Okay? King okay. David. King David came to a point where he said, huh, y'all know, y'all not tell you about King David. King David is like, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, my foot almost slipped. Is that what he said? Yes. Mm -hmm. My foot almost slipped. Looking over at the other churches that were full, looking over at the big mega churches, trying to see the, what the world is doing. My foot almost slipped. David was a shepherd. He was a pastor. He was a leader of people. Job. Job, when they begin to talk to Job, Job says, look, you know, I, I don't know if I can, I can take this. You know, my friend, where is my help? That's a pastor. The pastors are saying, where is my help, Lord? Where is my help? And then we have yeah, Job, Jeremiah, 
I, I, I can't quite, Jeremiah was one who, I think weeping. when he was crying, wasn't he the weeping one? He's yeah. the weeping prophet. Okay. The prophet. We, we see that. We see that he was the weeping one. He was the weeping one. So, Elmer, as we look at your paper, we see these ones. Do we have? We have one more. I don't know why Naomi popped up because Naomi really it popped up, and I just thought, oh, let let it pop up because Naomi became bitter. <clears throat> she became bitter. So, Elmer, when you are writing. I want you to look at these suggestions that I'm giving you for your paper because you are writing about pastors who are walking away from the ministry. They're deserting the pulpit. Churches are empty. Uh, the um, the people are not giving into the tithes and they're not supporting as they used to. And pastors and and shepherds and and uh, those in ministry can become very uh, disheartened. And so I suggest you look at the seven. If this will be, this is being recorded. And so you have all this now. You have uh, the seven, those those deaconess, those deacons, excuse me, the deaconess who uh, were chosen to help out those so that the other ones can bring the word. Amen. Moses, Elijah, David, King David, Job, Jeremiah. Okay? We go on because we're looking at Elder Moore's paper. One of the things we've looked at was making sure the title page is centered. The title page is centered. And the, every, you know, we center where it needs to be centered. Amen? So we're doing that. We come to the introduction. Uh, I like the way you you tried to start the introduction. You tried to open with uh, a grabber, something that grabs. I like to see what you've done with that, and uh, make sure that one of the things that I see when I read this, I'm like, we're talking about pastors, but we need to talk about pastors. We can't talk about pastors all over. We can't talk about pastors in the Reformed Church. We've got to limit it. The Lutheran Church, either we're going to be talking about African American pastors in the churches, we got to limit it, we got to narrow it down somewhere. So, Dr. George is going to work with you on that. What are you saying? I'll, I'll leave the nomination. You can't talk about pastors in those. Speak a little louder. You're saying that you can't talk about pastors in any denomination that's yes, listed? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. But somewhere mm -hmm. along the line, it's too broad. You can't talk all the way about shepherds in the Catholic Church, shepherds in the Reformed Church. Shepherds, well, you can mention that, but your focus has to be pastors. What? What pastors? So that's the only way that your book can help those. Get this, get this where you narrow this down. Narrow this down. Where, where you're going to talk about a group of pastors. Say that when you talk about African American pastors or or any um, uh, pastors, you at least can talk about any pastors that you want to. But somewhere your research has to talk about pastors. Limit it down. You can't talk about pastors. Your pastors over there. You're too broad. Okay. You can bring the research in. You're going to bring the research in. But either I'm going to talk about pastors in the Methodist church or I'm going to talk about pastors in the Presbyterian church. But I can't talk about all of them. I might just mention if I got uh, something, um, something, you know, like a, a research, even Pentecostal. Well, that, 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 that's the whole point. They didn't, most, most of the research does not really restrict that research to one denomination. They talk about pastors as a whole, overall. Yeah, overall. You, I'll let I'll let Dr. George, you can't you're talking about pastors overall, but your research has to focus. Overall, you're not just talking about pastors, 
You're talking about evangelists. You're talking about elders. You're talking well, I about agree there. I, I can agree you there. You can't talk about all of them. Your focus is on pastors. See, this is this burnout is not in the ministry here. It's not just pastors. Pastors cannot be in this thing alone. I agree with you. When you're in a so, church. So I, I made I made a statement about the vocational ministry, but then the, then I said that there are others that are not pastoring, that are not pastors. That's I made right. that statement. That's right. But you can't talk about everybody. We're only going to focus on pastors. We focus All right. on who is I, going to I understand. Be. I understand. Okay. What what is your focus? You know, I mentioned that. Um, when I was writing about domestic violence, I wanted to write to every woman. But I had to bring it down and narrow it some kind of way. So that- and, and that's I just narrowed it down to pastors. Right, you I'm narrowed down, down to pastors in what church? What pastors are you talking about? Uh, when you Okay. See, the surveys and the research does not necessarily go down to certain churches or certain denominations. It's pastors. Pastors. As a whole. As a whole. As a whole. Okay. Pastors. As a whole. As a whole. Dr. Joy, I'm going to talk to okay. you for a moment. I'm going to talk, yeah, to as talk to Ella Moore. Okay, he's, he's looking at his, his writing is geared towards pastors all it doesn't matter what denomination all pastors are leaving catholic pastors you know they're leaving protestant are leaving baptist every kojic everybody no matter what denomination you are i think if i'm correct elder moore correct me that he's trying to to gear it towards just pastors in general pastors in general because most of most of the surveys and statistics is not just limited to a certain denomination. Go, go to the class. Go, go to the I don't know. Try to join the class. Try to come in one more time. Try to come in one more time, okay? I'll I'll let Dr. Joyce call you. Okay, I have a, I have a question for you because you know, you know, my, my, my subject is on priest. Okay, let me, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish with, with uh, Elder Moore, because Elder Moore is on, I've got his paper up. That's why I need you to be on, we're on line. I need you to be on Zoom, because his paper is up. Okay? Can't hear him. Try, try to see if you can get on. I'm with you on your phone, by your phone number on my iPhone. Yeah. Can't see your class. Yeah. Try, try. Doctor Joyce gave you that. Uh, I think she gave you that link. Try that link one more time and get on so that you can see. Because it's important that you see what I'm saying to Doctor Moore, Elder Moore. Okay. All right. Bye. Elder Laura, let me, let me explain one more time. One of the things that we do in research, because this is research, your research will take you uh, all over, but you must have a focus. You must narrow your paper. We can't talk about every pastor or every church. Somewhere you narrow this thing down. It's only narrowed down to those that I narrowed it down to those that are resigning and leaving. Not everyone, and okay. I even made a statement that that some leave, even that's been prosperous. Okay. That the the, the the church has been prosperous, so it's not every pastor. I understand that, okay. but it's those that it's those that are leaving, and it doesn't make any difference what denomination. And as I've researched, I got. I got a lot of stuff that I've researched, and a lot of research. They do not, 
narrowed down to denominations. So when you say, uh, and, and even in your title, your title doesn't say anything. It just says empty pulpit. I understand that. And that's what you that said we're going to do, we'll work on the title. I understand. You got, we got to work on that. So it comes. Pastors but, lead the ministry. What ministry? Pastors are leaving the ministry. What ministry? What are you talking about? Again, so you, you, again you said that this is just a draft. So I have to get the tile, my tile, but still, those are thoughts that, that's there. Okay. And, and I'm looking at what you wrote. I'm looking at what you wrote. You 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 said there is a there is underway in the United States. Uh, hold on a minute, I'm trying to something that is called the Great Resignation. Three percent of employees collectively refuse the terms of low wages, absent benefits, and dangerous working conditions as expected by their bosses. This resignation is not restricted to any particular group of people but in many professions and fields of labor. What does that have to do with ministry? That the next paragraph comes, comes along. Pastors are all, also part of that resignation. That's what it has to do with ministry. This crisis not only affects, but where, where did you get that information from? The United States, something that's called the Great Resignation. Where did you get that information? Yeah. Right there. Okay. I got I it right here. I don't see it here. I don't see it here. So whenever you put in something, you have to, in your research, you have it. to say where you got it from. And quote it. Where did you get that from? And what does it have to do with what you're writing about? If your focus is on pastors, I need to have something more, more narrowed down. It's just what I'm telling uh, Elder Sandejas. He wants to write on faith. Faith is this broad. Whose faith are you talking about? Whose faith? Whose faith? Now faith, this faith. You got to narrow it in. Because there is so much information out there on faith. Somewhere along the line, Elder Sandejas, you have to bring it in. What are you talking about? Faith. Who's faith? What are you going to tell me about faith? Well, I want to say that you've got to have faith. you got to do more than that in this research paper. You got to tell me what others are saying about faith. Not only what the Bible says about faith, but what others are saying about faith. And when you tell me what others say about faith, you got to tell me where you got it from. The great resignation. I want to want to have you open this in a different way. Open it where we know right away what your focus is. Why pastors are joining the great resignation? Why pastors are joining the great resignation? And then when you talk about pastors, we want to put that in our definition. I'm going to put pastors in the definition. Pastors. What is the definition of a pastor? There are shepherds. There are leaders. The different definition of a pastor depends on where you, where you get it from. And and. In, and in, if in, the, in the Catholic Church, what a pastor? Because if you write about everybody, you're going to surely have to tell me about everybody. You're going to tell me have to tell me what pastors are in the Catholic Church. See, so different. In, in the New Testament, you only find pastors one time. That's in the New Testament. But That's you don't why. find pastors in the Old Testament. You find those that that is in the position. You're what we call more, you're going to have to give me more than what's in the New Testament. You're going to have to give me more. You're going to have to do your research. I want more than, than what a pastor. Pastors, pastors. What we call pastors is different than, than 
Is it the same as the, the Bible? See, we call pastors, it might not be the same, but we call them pastors. We who? People of this day and time. What people? Church people. What church people? Most church people. Who? You can't, you can't tell, you can't, that, that again, you cannot cut that down to certain denominations. Because pastors are called pastors it in other been denominations. Done. I've already pulled up the research. When I talk to you about this, I've already researched it. I've already looked at it. I've already looked at it. Okay. I'll probably not already really look at it too, but I I'll probably like not look at it the way you I've look at it. at it. So much. I have too. I got I'm a whole stack. For you to give me something. You say you have it. I don't see it. I don't have it there. Great challenges that include weathering a global pandemic and its many effects, widespread and civil unrest, contentious election season. America is rocking and reeling as it begins to move to the unknown. That's good. That's, that's all right. We understand that pastors are facing challenges. But when it comes down to it, we really need to bring it down to where, it, who, who does it affect? What pastors can we talk about here? When we talk about burnout, burnout, it, 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 burnout is not for just because you're white or you're black. Burnout affects black and white. It affects pastors, bishops, all those that are in ministry. When we talk about ministry burnout, not just burnout, but ministry burnout. Ministry burnout, that's what we're talking about. Not just a focus on pastors, but your subject is ministry burnout. What kind of research are you finding on ministry burnout? <laughs> and in this essence, ministry burnout is affecting pastors. It's affecting those pastors in the Presbyterian Church in the Reformed Church. Well, what do you say about them? You mention them, surely you're gonna give me some information. You're gonna to have to do all of that in your paper. All we wanna do is narrow it so that you don't, you're not spending days and days trying to find out about this and about that one. Somewhere you're gonna narrow it, even if you don't narrow it down to African-American um, pastors. You're going to have to focus somewhere, okay? Many pastors, some of color, have walked away from their pulpit and left them empty. Some of color. What about those of color? There's a percentage. So what, Elder? The survey, the survey and research said, uh, on this particular Where one. Is the uh, survey? Where is the survey? I, I got it, but I haven't put it in there. And that's what I that's what I've been trying to tell you. Where where am I? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't know I was supposed to put a survey into the introduction. It doesn't. The introduction does. When you, the first, you, the when last you read, survey. remember, I I said this and I recorded it. Go back and look at the recording. In the proposal, this proposal is written so that the example shows you that if you talk about burnout. You can talk about it, but if you talk if you talk about something somebody else has said, you have to quote them. You have to give them credit. But if you're generally talking about it, using your own words in the introduction, you, you wouldn't have to bring up nobody or no survey. But if you say something in, in that paper that 24% of the uh, millennials are where did you get that 24%? Now you've got to document. Now you've got to tell me if the survey says some of color have walked away from there, we can say this as long as we, many pastors, many pastors, some of color have walked away from their pulpit and left them empty. 
Others that were not pastors left the vocational ministry altogether. They have no desire to return to the pulpit. Even now, there are some who are thinking about leaving the ministry. They ask themselves the important question. This is good. This is what you, you can put this in here. But if you got this from uh, the great resignation, or if you got this from somewhere, then you have to tell me where you got it from. You've got quotes here. You don't, if you wrote this, if you wrote, now, now, if you write this introduction, you don't have to use any documentation if you write it without using someone else's words in there. You're using your words, generically speaking. But the moment you tell me that you got it from somewhere else, okay? What would I do if I am not? Oh my gosh. You, you get it? Yes. One more? I got it. Okay. I want to see what you are writing. In the past few years, many church doors have, we know this for fact. This is common knowledge. It's what we call common knowledge. In the past few years, many church doors have been left closed and many pulpits have been left empty. Have been, have been. You see that have been? So when you're writing, we're going to critique that. Have been. Have been. We're looking for redundancy. Okay? That's, that's the other thing we're looking for. Have been, have been. We are mindful that pastors were resigning before the pandemic. Make it plain. Don't assume that everybody knows what you're talking about. Before the uh, pandemic in whenever, or the the COVID pandemic, or something like that. You're just making your sentences uh, complete. Your thoughts complete. A change has taken place in the ministry, and pastors who have said they were called by God to do a work are stepping away. That's common knowledge. We don't have to quote nobody. That's common knowledge. This is common knowledge. Okay? After two years of live stream worship, this is common knowledge. You don't have to quote nobody here. We know this. After two years of live stream worship service, telepastoral care, and online funerals, many pastors are exhausted. Many are leaving because of irretractable irret irret conflict caused many, many Many, we, 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 we're going to look at that. Many, we're, that's, that's our job as, as the editors. The editors are looking for those words. We're also looking for complete sentences that make sense, okay? Embedded sexism. Now, we're looking for a paragraph here. Embedded sexism. Shifting congregational commitment. All of this here. The pandemic, we always said the pandemic. So we're gonna talk about the pandemic. Make it plain. A change has taken place in ministry and pastors who have said they were called by God. Okay, that's good for the introduction. You're gonna to have to clean it up, narrow it down so we know what pastors you're talking about. Pastors, if, if you're gonna stick with that, I'm just safer, it's safer that you wanna stick with talking about everybody. Okay, Amen. pastors, because in your definitions, I want you to, to define pastors, but I want you to also define shepherds. I want you to define, also define what? what? Define pastors and also define what? Shepherds. Oh, okay. Shepherds. Define um, because a priest, priests are pastors in the Catholic Church. Okay, but anyway, All you right. can narrow this down where you're talking about uh, the Christian church or the Christian um, church where, where we know we have something we know about. Okay. All right. Research questions. You, this, you got it here. You got it. You, one of the things that I ask here is that you be, be receptive to feedback. When, when, when feedback oh, yeah. is given, 
even if you hear it in another uh, a, a, of another student's paper, take notes. Take notes. Be willing to, to, to change. Be willing to get that feedback and go with that feedback. Okay? Research. The first question that, the first question that I, I just deleted it because it's kind of part of another one. Don't, don't throw away nothing. Let your let your editor look at it. All right. And you clean it up. Yeah. Good for you. That's what you should be doing. Let your editor look at it. That that's what what should happen. Okay. All right. Okay. So we've numbered them, and and we've numbered them. But actually, they're going to be. Um, I'm going to leave it like it is. But but what's going to happen? We're going to double space this. Right. Because everything is double spaced. But we got it like this, so now we can look at it. What is the reason? What is the reason what? That's what why I say I about? eliminated that. Huh? I, I just eliminated that okay. because... Of the... Did they make a mistake in what they heard God say? Did Who, who is they? Pastors. You get that? Yeah. They. Did they get ahead of their thoughts? Who is they? Who is they? I understand. We're all called. Pastors are not the only one called. Pastors are not the only ones called. God calls us all to minister. Amen. So narrow it down somewhere. Okay? Because I, I believe I'm called. I'm called to teach. So we have to narrow it down. Was this self-motivation? And so was this self-motivation or I think what I understand you to say was this, did they call it self? Yes. That would be, just put that down. Did the pastors call themselves to the pulpit? Did they call themselves to the ministry? Why is the pulpit left empty? Why did the shepherds of the church, because there's, there's something else you can look at, Elder Moore. Yes. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd is not going to leave his flock. Right. The hiring. That was one of my thoughts. Okay. Put that down. The hiring. The hiring. You got to put that in your paper. I think. The I think hiring will, will leave his flock. The, you know, when you call, the, uh, you're going to stick. I don't care what. It's going to come some tumultuous times, some difficult times. But when you're called, you don't feel like teaching. You don't feel like preaching. But when you're called of God, he gives you the strength. Amen. And to stick. Those who are, are leaving the pulpit, were they called? That's your question. Was this, did they call themselves? See? And make sure you put that in there because that's very important. The hiring. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The hiring is going to leave that pulpit. When trouble comes, when it gets too much, thunder and lightning, the hiring leaves that pulpit. That's why Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. Make sure you put that in there. The pastor is the one that is over the flock of God. Right. He stands in the place of Jesus Christ. And he's going to stick. He or she is going to stick. What is the pulpit? That's a good question. Not only do we know what the pulpit is, we know that it's a wooden, usually it's made out of wood. In the, in the Traditionally, it's made out of wood. I think I put that in one of my books. Traditionally, the pulpit is made out of wood. It stands on an elevated platform for the minister to stand before God's people. It is elevated. It's traditionally made out of wood. These days, the pulpit is made out of plexiglass and other things. So what is the pulpit? Well, the pulpit is not only just wood, our glass, plexiglass, glass, the pulpit is a calling. It's a ministry. So there's two definitions there for pulpit. Pulpit could be your calling. It's, it's, your, it's your box. It's your 
place where the word of God goes forth. So you're going to have to define pulpit. I, I, I didn't did all that. Okay. I, Why? I got, I got that in my writing. But see, Beautiful. most people don't understand that the, the pulpit is not, is not given to, in the same sense as a podium. See? It's not give they, the podium. The, they never, when you research it, a podium is never uh, referred to uh, the clergy when it comes to a clergy or preaching. They always <laughs> use the word pulpit, never use podium. When you, you know research. What? Unfortunately, we are changing. Everything we got with the, what I call pseudo, pseudo worker, pseudo worker. Because now, every word, I can sit right here and give you a word. I don't have to be behind a pulpit. And that's what people are getting. That, that's right. Pulpit can be on the street corner. That, that's my whole point of that's what is the pulpit. Said. Pulpit can be on the street corner. That's what I need you to put in your paper. I got all that, but it's not down there. Okay. okay. That's all right. You're going to get it in. Either you get it in. I'll or get there. But uh, like, like I said, I got stuff that's not in there. I submitted that to you. It, even, the pulpit could be on the street corner. Pulpit could be on the college campus. That's what I got. Okay. Put it in there. Put it in the paper. So Is there a question? What else? Is it, uh, I, I'm, uh, forgive me, but uh, the pulpit's usually in the sanctuary, and that's holy ground, isn't it? Isn't that where... Um, you know, I, I mean, I understand where Elder's saying that you can preach from the streets or, but uh, a pulpit and a lecture, that's for the sanctuary. Am I misunderstanding? It, it, a pulpit could be in the, the sanctuary, but a pulpit is, is used as a place. It's a place where you have uh, an audience. Yes. And the way I would look that up, I would look and try to find out what it is biblically. Yes. Look it up to find out what it is what piece of furniture? Because it's a piece of furniture in the sanctuary. But Jesus the had a table. Pulpit. The communion table a is a piece of furniture. Jesus had a pulpit in the boat. The part of a boat was called a pulpit. Jesus was in the boat, and that was a pul That was his pulpit when he was preaching and teaching. That that's true. But a pulpit can be anywhere. That's right. A pulpit can be anywhere. A pulpit. Right. I'm talking about a piece of furniture. So you're going to give me a definition for furniture in the, in the tabernacle. There yes. were several pieces of furniture in the tabernacle. Okay? Pieces of I furniture. Mother Butler, but of course I'm, no, I, I don't look at a pulpit as just a piece of furniture. I give you the definition. I, Amen. I, I, I Amen. I want you to give me what research says. I'll give you that. You give me what research says. I know that there's a definition as a piece of furniture. The communion table is a piece of furniture as it was in the tabernacle. Holy, sacred, dedicated to the Lord, as Ellison Deha said. Sacred. But everyone don't see the altar. What happened to the altar? When I was a little girl, we went into the altar. Some churches, you're like, where's the altar? They got a pulpit, but they don't have an altar. So what you what you're saying is that you are more saying that the pulpit can't be on the street corner unless it's a piece of furniture. The pulpit That's what I understand you're saying. It's a platform. It, not you a, don't have to not have a piece of furniture on the corner. corner. But Wherever you take the stand and preach the gospel, that that is a pulpit. I'm going to see what your research is going to find. You need to come. I don't want what Elder Moore says. I want what research says. You can give me what Elder Moore says, but this is research. You tell me what research says. Mm. Tell me what the cause of pastors leaving. I don't want what Elder Moore says. Other than other than your introduction, but somewhere along the line, when you get over into chapter two, you're going to tell me why pastors are leaving. Why are they leaving? Are they that's leaving? That's why I'm going to say all of it over in chapter two, but you want some of it in the introduction in chapter one? 
You got your questions here. Your questions are here. You got your questions. You got to think that these are these are what you're going to answer over in chapter two. Yes. Well, you got it here. Family sickness, physical, mental, financial, personal. Are these the reasons? That 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 wasn't there for a question. I just yeah. I said, in my I, mind, I, I would only put it there, so right. I wouldn't. Leave. That's all right. I told you, don't throw nothing away. But here's an important one. What is burnout? You can't talk about burnout unless you define it. Don't just assume you're talking about burnout, and, and, and I don't even know what burnout is. What are you talking about? And we're not just talking about burnout. What kind of burnout are we talking about? Ministry burnout. I think I told you that I heard about two or three weeks ago that teachers, public school teachers, are burning out. What is, what is, so if I was I, writing a paper on teachers, my paper would be focused on teachers burning out. Number 20. Number 20. What is ministry burnout? Okay, number 20. So that, that, that can go in one. That number 17. In one. What is burnout? In Christian perspective. What was that, Pastor? Number number seventeen. What is burnout in a Christian perspective? What is burnout? Number sixteen. Okay. What is burnout? In a Christian, 17. In a Christian perspective. That's, what is that's burnout in a Christian perspective? Research. When you ask these questions, Elder Moore, I expect to see answers. I got answers. Okay. Where did you get your answers? Are you getting them from research? This is a research. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay, so you got to put it in the paper. Huh? But I didn't know I was supposed to put all that in in in, in this first part of the paper because the question, research question, I. But I can put it. I can put it all there. I put it. I, I'm not going to hold anything. Everything I get, I'm going to put it in the paper. What you have to do, Elmore, is listen. Listen, let the Holy Ghost lead you to hear what I'm saying. I hear what you're saying, and it's leading don't me. All of these 19 questions, but please don't throw them away because we're going to use them. They're going to guide your research study. When you do your introduction here, when you do the introduction, you're talking about burnout. That's, that's, we're talking about pastors leaving the pulpit. But I don't see anything where you're saying they're leaving the pulpit because of ministry burnout. Why are they leaving the pulpit? They're leaving, but I, I, I wasn't sure, but of whether you're talking about ministry burnout, somewhere along the line, we need to be in our introduction talking about they're leaving for ministry burnout, and then if you say ministry burnout, then surely you're going to define it. You got to tell them you're going to if you're going to preach, if your subject you get up to preach, hmm. and you preach, you said I'm going to preach today for a subject. It's going to be ministry burnout. That's what I'm expecting that you're going to preach about. You're going to preach about ministry burnout. Okay, statement of the hey. problem. I think we tried to put it in there. I'm going to go to the next one to see what Dr. Joyce has said on this one. All right. Let me see if I can get the next one in. All right. And this is the next one. This is the one where Dr. Joyce has said it. I just, I went through basically and just corrected some things. Um, I need to get I need to get everyone's phone number. So if I have questions when I'm going through, I can call and I can ask people. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm making it a little larger and I'm putting she has she has already edited. She's corrected yes. some things here. Yes. Graduation. Okay, we, we talked about that one. Yeah. Graduation yes. project. Yeah. She, she's editing the best she can for you. Okay, she corrected something. We already talked about that. Right. Submitted. 
we still want to get Ernest Moore, Ernest Miller's name correct. Right. And we still highlight those things. We, we highlight them. Because our job is to help you. It's already highlighted there, what you need to do. We talked about that. Right. Here's the letter. She's already fixed the letter up for you. Okay? All we need to do is put the date in. Okay? And she, she tried to uh, make it up for you. Really in here, we talked about all we need here is the title. It's not dissertation. We can say graduate. I know, I see. Okay. Help me out. Help me out. You're a graduate. That's what you are. And all we want here is your argument. Mm -hmm. All we want here is your, um, uh, let, me, let me put it like this. Let me just put it. Again, I can make suggestions. You either follow those suggestions or y'all gonna write it the way y'all gonna write it. I, I have no other choice but to leave it at that. Okay? My job is to teach you how to write a research paper. Of course, you're gonna put in your thoughts. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for your thoughts. But I'm also looking for this is your eye. idea statement. All right. Yeah. Your mm -hmm. argument. <laughs> argument. I'm just putting that in there so that you know you know. You don't have to put this in your paper. This is your idea, your idea statement or your argument. That's what this is. Okay. That's all that that is. Okay. What is your statement or argument? Many people have lost faith in their passions and seeking help and solution. That might be a, a good argument right there. Dr. Joyce would tell you. That okay. might be a good argument. But does it say anything about, it says many people. Burnout. Burnout. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an idea statement. Many people have lost faith in their pastors, but it doesn't say anything about pastors. The ministry. So the argument is, why are some pastors leaving the ministry? That's the argument. That's what you are fussing about. That's what you are arguing about. Why are pastors leaving the pulpit? Why weren't they called? This should be right here. Your argument. Your idea statement. Why are men and women leaving the pulpit? Not just leaving the pulpit, because the pulpit could be just a, a piece of furniture. But why are they leaving the church? Why are they leaving their calling? Anybody can stand behind a pulpit these days. And and then look, now, now many of us don't have pulpits. We're on Zoom. Mm -hmm. I look at bishops in the Church of God in Christ and uh, giving communion. They don't, they don't have a pulpit. But you know, it's going to be where, it, even in Africa, mm -hmm. there's not always a pulpit. I was in Africa. There's not always a pulpit or a sanctuary to stand in. But you mm -hmm. get faithful to your calling if it's in the middle of a village. In that village, you're preaching. you got a pulpit. you got a platform. So God has given you a platform. A place to stand before his people. You may not always have that sacred piece of furniture that's found in the sanctuary. But a pulpit is a platform. It's an open door. It's a, it's a thing that God will set you. Why are people leaving the pulpit? Anybody can leave a, a pulpit. But a pastor, he's not only leaving a pulpit. What's so important about a pulpit? What's so important about that? That's my argument. God said, get out there in the highway, in the byways, and the hazards, and propel them to come. 
You ain't got to sit in on a pulpit to do that. Keep on keeping on and get out there in the field, in the vineyard. In the vineyard, because the pulpit is a piece of person, but it also can be that part that God has called you to, that platform. And you can take it anywhere God says, go, you got a platform. Anywhere God says, okay, right now, open your mouth. That's the platform. That's the pulpit. Going to the highways and the byways ain't always going to be. I know it wasn't in Africa and the people were faithful to what they had. I was in South Africa about 2008. The idea statement, argue right here. Why are these pastors and others, put the other ones in, ministers, elders, why are they walking away from their calling? And then put in your research title. Remember, it's graduate. Yes. You're, you're a graduate, which is a very high level to speak in, believe it or not. You're a graduate student, you're at a very high level. You can call yourself a graduate student. And if you go out there and get in one of those Pepperdine, and people will say, you're a graduate student? Find out how important it is. That's the research title. So instead of just saying, Pastors walk away, say pastors and others. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you can you can you can make that, yeah. Sure, because that's what's happening. Pastor walks away, you know, but there are others called. The others are called too. Not just pastors, elders are called. Amen. Evangelists are called. Yes. See? And and you're gonna walk away from that? So here your title. I need a good title right in there. Okay. All right. We, we're moving right here. Um, there's a special way that you hold your key. We'll set this up for you when we get ready to submit it. The seat seeds, the little small seeds. But we'll, we'll fix it up. All right. I, I, I just say, like I say, we will edit. We will edit. I just have to get you to put something down. Yes, ma'am. And once you put something down, my job is to say whether yay or nay. Like this, this, no, this not research, or, 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 you know, that type of thing. Okay, I see people, we don't want all of this. We don't cast it out. We don't talk about it. Hello, somebody. We don't, we don't so, talk about all so of when this. I start, like when I start playing, Thank you for submitting that outline. I, I, I love you for submitting the outline. I love it when, 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 Students say, let me just do what she's telling me to do here. I love it when it comes together. I'm trying to center this. Okay. Okay. I think we did, we centered it in the other one, so you get the idea of, of centering it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You get the idea. I just flood you with whatever I got. Chapter in there, you got you got all that. The main thing, Elder Moore, is that you submitted an outline. You not only submitted an outline, you submitted a letter. You submitted a title page. You submitted the introduction. If you don't submit the, an introduction, I can't tell you what's wrong with it. Yes, ma'am. Now I can say, wait a minute, it looks all right. The United States, that's really big. United States. Yes, hey, wait a minute. Who are you talking about here? I, I'm, I'm going to introduce this thing, but I want to talk about pastors and shepherds and elders and those in the ministry. Okay? Main thing, you, you got it in here. It's a problem. We can work with this. The more you give, don't think you're giving too much. Mm -hmm. Okay? They have a problem. Because we can mess with all of you, even got that in. Maybe it's maybe we can work with this. Now we can come along and say, wait a minute, we can work with this. We can put stuff in here, pop, 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 make it pop. But we have to know your thoughts. 
Miss Moore. I can't write it. I couldn't write it, but I want to write it from Elder Moore's perspective. I want to help you write it from Elder Moore. Methodology. He got that in there. And the main thing, he got a founder of research questions. He got it. That's the idea. And, and you will hear me. I'll go toe to toe with you. I'm going to tell you who used to do this. Dr. Miller. Yeah, um. <laughs> Dr. Miller used to go toe-to-toe. So he can kind of say, wait a minute, you're not getting it. You're not going to scare This is research. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Enough of that. Let me see if I can go to, let me see. Hold on a minute. Let me see what I got. Uh, ooh, uh, see, Dr. Joyce. Okay, let me see. Dr. Butler is 734. Okay, 734. We're gonna, we're gonna wrap it. Okay, L let me just see if I can share one more thing. If I have another class, that's the whole thing. Uh, okay. quick look. Don't let me go beyond uh, 7.45. Uh, quick look at Candace, people. I don't know which one. She's giving me so much. <laughs> okay. That's her literature review. Okay, she's already finished the, um, she's already finished the proposal. So I'm, I'm going to show you her proposal next week. This is chapter two. This is where she's at. You can see her thinking. She's writing on millennials. Here she is writing about millennials, which is millennials are all over the world. They are a certain generational group. So We're not seeing her page. What's that? We're not seeing the page. Okay, all right, let me stop here. And then you tell me if you can see it. Thank you, Dr. Joyce. No worries. That's 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 what I need. Are you able to see that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. This is her chapter two <laughs> proposal. Now, while I'm talking about this. Some people take a year to write their proposal. They, they go through the class and they're like, I can't get this done. I don't have time to do it. I'm in ministry. I got to preach on this Sunday. I got, that don't bother me. It's up to you. You are going to finish it when you finish it. Okay. When you finish it, you will have five chapters. Beginning with the proposal, chapter two, chapter three, so forth. She's now on chapter two. And here's what she has done for chapter two. I asked her to give me an outline. Okay, that's her chapter one. Here's chapter one right there. She did that one. Y'all got the same thing. Here's her chapter two, literature review. She's reviewing the literature. This is all the stuff that Dr. Moore, Elder Moore has that he can't put in the proposal. This is all the stuff here that she's gonna now put in her chapter two. This is her outline. She said, I'm gonna talk about the history of the black church. I'm gonna talk about who, who are millennials. I'm gonna talk about the myth of millennials. I'm gonna talk about understanding millennials why millennials matter, and so forth. She's talking about millennials, but she's talking about millennials in the black church because her thesis is millennials are leaving the black church. So she has to narrow it down. Pastors are leaving the church. What church are they leaving? Are they leaving churches? Are they leaving the body of Christ? Because the church is real big. We're not, we're just not the church. We're in the church, 
The body of Christ is huge. Okay? So she's narrowing it down. I have to narrow it down. What millennials are talking about? Well, well, millennials. What What are the age groups? Oh, well, these are the age groups. Are you talking about Gen Xers? Are you talking about baby boomers? Make it plain. Talk about millennials. Okay? This is her chapter two. It's where everything... Now she has to really... Whatever she says, and have to come from somewhere. She has to tell me where she got it. She has to document where you got this information from. Okay? I'm going to stop here right there and see. Uh, I know that um, I tried this as much as I could. Are there any questions, Elder Moore? Then we're going to Elderson Day House. I think I, I think I pretty well understand those brother. <laughs> Because a lot of stuff I was holding back for chapter two instead of just going and putting it all out there. Yeah. So the you want it all out there. I give you all my research, everything. Okay. The information you have for so chapter two. I, I understand now. Okay. Chapter two is going to be that information that has, that you have to have documentation for it. Right. That's what not ever more saying it. You gotta have documentation of who said it. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Out, who said that? Yes. Yeah. And, and then we'll show you how to reference it properly. And, and also to answer uh, information that answer some of those questions that I got there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. But but people don't throw stuff away. Because if you can't use it in chapter one, you can use it in chapter two. If you can't use it in chapter two, your Bible can use it in chapter three. So don't throw nothing away. Okay. You know, don't throw, keep everything. <laughs> day hop, then we're going to get yeah. off because I have another class. It's 740. Yes. Well, it, it'll only take a few minutes. You know, in, in studying this proposal and, and, and starting to get it ready, I realized that there's research to be done also. Uh, you know, the, 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 the topic of faith, I, I, I was going to try to just narrow it down to biblical because what I want, that's my, that's what I want to do is I want to encourage people to stay in faith in God Almighty. But when I was thinking about it, I said to myself, you know, is there other types of faith? And, and there are. There's secular faith versus biblical faith. Amen? There you go. Faith has to walk. It got to walk. You want me to narrow it down? Pardon? Out of the Bible. Let that faith walk out of the Bible. Put it in, as Dr. J. Vernon McGee would say, put it in shoe leather ministry. Shoe leather. Yes. That's yes. why I suggested, Ellison Day, uh, that your subject be spirituality and faith. Yes. Spirituality and faith. Because I those two go together. And that's why I wanted to keep it. But I tell you, like, when I started studying the heroes of faith and I started uh, started researching, I, I started to, this, this started to come to my mind that there's there's not only faith in God, but there's, there's secular faith. You know, that, but you don't want me to, to even address that. Just uh, keep it on the biblical. Just keep it on the Just keep it biblical. You may have to like you were from the pulpit. From the pulpit, you might explain. Yes. The world has a certain faith. Yes. The world has, I'm telling you, the world is planning for the next century. That's how much faith the world got. They're already planning for what bridges they're going to build and what buildings they're going to build. They have build. faith that they're Carl getting the work. They have, they have faith, but it's just not. They don't have biblical faith. They don't have the faith in God is what we need. They don't realize that that everything that they have comes from God. And so that's where there's that that's that ignorance that they walk in uh, as far as faith goes biblically. Okay. All right. All right. It's good to see you, uh, Elder Sandeha. It's good to see you. I'm Thank so you. Got on. <laughs> yes, I think yes, I'm, no. I'm finally catching it. So I think we'll. We'll be, I'll be able to be more involved. Keep writing, keep writing, keep writing. Don't give up. Don't throw nothing. And to you. Get as much as you can on spirituality and faith. They go hand in hand. I, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged. And I know that uh, you're going to be, uh, that both you and Dr. Kelly are going to 
are going to see that I'm going to be doing well in, 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 in the proposal part for sure. We can't do anything without seeing something. You got Amen. to see something. I realize that. Okay. I right, realize. I hear from uh... Mother Butler. Uh -huh. One question. Uh, are you going to give Dr. Joyce the phone numbers or should we send them to her? Yeah, let's... I'm waiting. I'm waiting to write them down now. Let's hear from. Uh, um... Okay, I'll give you mine now. Elder Boyd, and then please, Dr. Joyce got her hand up. She's going to take those. Okay. Elder Boyd? 743. Dr. Joyce? Yes. I just need the quick phone numbers of okay. uh, Elder Moore okay. and Elder Zazenhaus, and I'm out. Uh, my phone number is 310 Yep. 345-3513. What was that? 310? 345. Three, 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 okay, three, I got it. 3513. Okay. Yes. Elders of the Day High. 562 319 9504. Okay, I'm out. Thank you. Can we have your number? <laughs> 5562. Five, Hold on, let me get 562 794 795 Eight five. Eight five. Nine. Is that it? Dr. Joy? We're freezing. We're freezing up. Okay. Duke County. Okay. We're freezing, freezing up. Uh, Elder okay. Boyd, I know that I've talked to Elder Boyd and we kind of got an understanding. Is that right, Elder Boyd? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we got an understanding. I looked at your, I have a hard copy of your paper and uh, Dr. Joyce and I will get together on that and we'll get back to you. But I've already talked to you today. Okay, but I will, I will submit Cause like I told you about the flash drive, but I, I, I was in the library today rewriting and hopefully I have that done and, and send you what I would have to add to what you already have. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, folks, I have another class that I've got to rush off to. I've enjoyed talking to you today. Y'all made me talk more than what I really wanted to talk. <laughs> but I can't do anything unless y'all submit stuff. I can tell you whether you're on the right track. I don't want you to be writing for days and days. That's why I'm trying to narrow you, keep you in. Otherwise, by the time you get to chapter two, you're going to have so much stuff that you, you, you just won't be able to work with it. You have too much or just nonsense stuff. Let's work smart, not harder. Okay? Amen. Thank you, Dr. Amen. Good to see you, Ellison Dehas. Have Thank you. Time. You also, doctor. Love you. Love you much. Thank Love you. you. Thank you. Bless, bless, bless. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bless, bless, bless in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.